I am excited to do this. I'm going to make a coffee cup on this little four inch by four inch canvas panel. It was painted with acrylic gouache. There is the cadmium red medium and the yellow deep and permanent orange. All I did was mush it on here until it looked like I wanted it to be and then let it dry. And when I say let it dry, I mean, I grabbed a heat tool and I dried it. <laughs> I want to get right into doing the painting though. So to do a coffee cup, I'm doing this looking straight down. So what I'm going to do is use a template. This is called a circle master. Pick it, circle master. Uh, this is a four inch by four inch panel and I am going to do my, nah, I'm going to do the, I want to do the circle about this big. This is just a General's white charcoal pencil. And I'm just going to zip around like that. And I am going to go ahead and sh shift down. So that first circle was the two and a half inch circle. And now I'm using the two inch circle and I am eyeballing it to kind of center it up. Since this is straight down, it's the easiest kind of coffee cup you can do because you can use templates to make your circles. And then the handle comes off and all the handle is, is basically a rectangle like that. And to give you a little bit more depth going down, you can bring it down like this and make two parallel lines which gives you the, the idea that it's got some thickness and it's going down. That's all that is. I do want to put some kind of leaves in here. And I think I want to do that before I do the cup, but I wanted to get the cup kind of on here. And the leaves are just going to be basically like, um, kind of, I think mapley leaf. Like that. And then Ooh, sorry about that squeaky if you heard that. That that's the only thing about um charcoal and chalk pencils and things like that. You can end up with the squeakies. I'm going to put one, put kind of a leaf shape there. I am doing this just by guess and by golly. If you don't feel comfortable drawing your leaves, you can always go find a leaf outside, set it down and just use parts of the leaf and trace around it. So. I'm going to say it's kind of like that, like this, and like that. I'm going to lay in a yellow on here, but I'm going to keep it kind of, um, I'm going to try and keep it a little bit muted. So I'm picking up a little bit of this kind of purpley color that was laying here. The, this purple was a mixture of magenta, the mixing magenta, and uh, Prussian blue. Yeah, autumn leaves. Uh, I think I am just really in that autumn feel right now, even though it's nine, you know, it's going to be over 90 degrees today. But what I'm going to do, I'm not making this paint super, uh, super opaque. I'm letting it be a little transparent. This is acrylic gouache. So it's Turner Acryl gouache. It has the acrylic polymer in it to make it um, permanent. It doesn't lift up. It doesn't re-wet. You can work with it a little bit while it's uh, still in its wet stage or slightly damp stage. 
and I'm just filling in. I'm not being super precise because you know what? Autumn leaves, they're dying. They're, they're, they're losing their, their shape. They're crumpling. They're crunching. They're, I love the crunch of leaves. And I am so excited. In about two or three weeks, we should be actually into fall here in the Pacific Northwest. So, and I'm just kind of, like I said, just filling it in. Look at that. You can do this. This is a, such a beginner friendly picture. Now, I'm going to grab just a smidge of burnt sienna and just let a little bit of this yellow that's in my brush mix with that burnt sienna. See, just like that. And I'm going to bring a little bit of that in here, here and there. Kind of start maybe a touch more burnt sienna. It's a little bit. Ah, there we go. And I'm just going to use that to make my veins. I'm not worried if I go over into the coffee cup because the coffee cup's going to end up covering parts of it. And I kind of like that almost graphic feel to it. If I put sort of an outline and then I pull it in, look at that. Easy peasy. Don't get frustrated. Just slow down. If it's going too fast for you, just slow down. Don't, you don't have to paint as quickly as I do. I'm painting a little bit fast just so that I can get this done in a quick lesson. People seem to like the quick lessons. Even if it takes them longer to paint them, they like the lesson to be quick. So now I'm going to bring some of that yellow on top of all that wet paint. Ah, look at that. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Bring a little bit of that yellow back over here. And I might even put a little bit of that darker shade underneath the edge on this one. Just play with it. See what makes you happy. That's my, that's really my whole way that I do my painting. I play, I see what makes me happy. I give it a chance to, to morph and change. I want some brighter yellow in. I don't want this to blend completely into the background. Okay, get a little bit of that there, get a little bit of the that brown on there. See, you can... Just play. That's all I'm doing. If you're liking these videos, please make sure to click that like button subscribe to the channel, share the videos with your friends, you know, the whole drill. I don't ask very often. I'm trying not to, you know, be that, <laughs> be that person that's always asking for people to subscribe. But every once in a while, I, you know, think about it <laughs> and say, hey, if you're interested. But Make sure that you like the channel and you want to, uh, if, you know, before you subscribe, make sure you like a channel, you, that you enjoy it, that you're going to come back and watch more. You know, subscribing is nice, but subscribing only works really if you come back to watch. There we go. I'm just putting a little bit more of that brown on there, grabbing some more yellow. 
just keeping it kind of loose, kind of abstract. I don't want to I don't want to take too much time. I think that the leaves are kind of getting there. I'm just using a filbert brush. You can use a liner brush. You can use a round brush. You can use whatever makes you happy to paint with. I want to put a little bit of dark down in there, down in there. This is going to sort of be underneath the edge of that uh, under the edge of the leaf, under the cup. And like I said, if you don't like something, you can paint over it. And remember that your painting is not going to look the same. You know, it, you're not going to get my brush strokes. You're going to get your brush strokes. And I think that is amazing. Okay. Maybe just some, some of that yellow, just boom, really bright. Get some highlights of the yellow on there and keep it loose. Don't, don't worry if your brush goes weird, like woo, right there. My brush just went, went weird. I'm just going to paint it in, color it in, use the paint. All right. So I'm going to dry this. Actually, I do want to soften that up just a little bit. Where did my towel go? There it is. I do want to get my, my leaf kind of, kind of feeling leafy. That one sort of went into a whole nother world. But this is in the background. This is not the is not going to be, you know, as noticeable in the long run. Now I am going to go over here and I'm going to pick up some white and move it down here where you can see it. Actually, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get the coffee in the cup. The cup is actually the last thing we're going to paint. So we're going to get the coffee in on the cup. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and some Prussian blue. That's a lot of Prussian blue. That was a lot of Prussian blue. We're going to add more burnt sienna to it. Making a really dark coffee. almost a black, but it's got a little bit of a softened, softened color to it. And I'm just going to paint in this circle with this dark coffee color. And now my circle does not have to stay as small. I can grow it out just a little bit. That's why your center circle Put it on slightly smaller than you expect it to end up because when you're evening out the edges around your circle, and you're evening out those edges around your circle, your bristles are going to flay out a little bit. Your line might be a little bit flat and you want to round it out. Look at that. Just grow your circle ever so slightly. And don't worry if it, if it ends up growing a lot, you just end up with a, uh, a finer China cup, right? This is a mug right now and I'm going to try and keep it a mug. I am a mug of coffee person. I am not, or mug of tea person. That cuppa, whatever my hot cuppa, whatever it is, I, I want it in a mug. 
you know, go to the tea room and uh, get your get a afternoon tea or something like that, and then. Ask for it in a mug. Once you've been someplace a few times, they get to know who you are. I'm going to grab a bit of white. Because I want to go in here and I want to put kind of a highlight. Right along this edge. There we go. A little bit more of a highlight. Just a little bit more white on my brush. But I didn't wash I didn't wash the brush. So that way I've got it softening it in and it's not it's not too strong. <laughs> My brush just fell apart. All right, this is probably 20 years old. <clears throat> it is an Artist Loft Fundamentals number eight. So you know, just use what you've got. I'm doing that. I'm just using what I've got. I like this small filbert. I'm going to have to go and get more. All right, now what I'm going to do is put a really high highlight that I don't blend in. My cup is going to be white, so I can have this reflection light going down in. I'm going to dry this and be right back. This is dry. I'm going to put a little bit more white out on my palette. My palette is really messy, and I like it that way. Once it dried, how you can see like all of the sort of shimmers, this coffee cup kind of moved a little bit. I am going to grab a touch of Prussian blue with some of this white and gray it down just a little bit. Prussian blue has a bit of black in it. And get just a touch of water, soften it up. All right. So what I'll do is I will use a slightly gray tone to put my cup in and then we can use a bright white for the highlight. Because generally what you see when you're looking at something that's white, you're not seeing white. You're seeing some other, you're seeing all the other colors basically. You're seeing the reflections of the environmental colors. So just put that in. I might end up having to go back and add a little bit of coffee to my cup. Because just like when you were making the circle to begin with, the coffee. <laughs> I kind of went into the coffee a little bit. That's okay. I can grow my coffee again. I am going to put the handle on here. Just a rectangle. I think I am going to let it be round at the outside edge. Look at that. It's going to be slightly darker. I'm picking up some burnt sienna and some Prussian blue, making a gray, and just plopping that on down in there. You can use a smaller brush. You don't have to use a big brush to do this, but you see how making that darker down low, below the brighter um, top part here, gives you that illusion of depth again. That illusion of sight. That's uh, of, you know, that illusion of highlight. So like going like this and putting more 
of a white right on top. I want it to be even more. Ah, there we go. There's, I am going to change my brush, I think, and just go for a round. This highlight on here. Highlight. Highlight does not have to be a continuous line. It's actually better if it's not a continuous line. If it, you know, stops and starts and breaks. But you do want to have enough water in your paint so when you put your highlight on, it flows off your brush. <laughs> I'm going to say there's a bit of a highlight here. Having that top edge of the cup. Grab a bit of this brown. Now rotate the canvas so that your hand can pull your lines. It's always better to pull your brush than it is to push your brush. Pushing your brush does weird things to your bristles. But see how I'm just straightening up my line, making it rounder. Let's see, I need some more burnt sienna, a little more Prussian blue. Making my circle round or round-ish. One of the things that happens when you're sitting down and you're doing something like this is that things get skewed and they don't feel perfectly round. So it's okay to pick it up and look at it. See that I have a flat edge right there. Now it gets to a point where you're like, okay, how much more fiddling am I going to do to it? How much more fiddling do I need to do to it? Okay. I like that. I'm going to get a bit more white. Put a little bit more of that highlighty bit right there. And look at that. I just smooshed my finger through it. Not a big deal. Go grab some paint. So if you learn just one thing from me, the one thing I want you to learn is that it's okay and you can always fix it. <laughs> it's okay and you can always fix it. I'm going to grab some of this gray blue that I made. I want to fix the edge of that handle. like that. I'm going to put a little bit of that shadow right there. I'm actually going to take a bit of that sh sort of shadowy gray. This is another old brush and I need to get my Gorilla Glue out and fix it, but I haven't done that yet. I'm going to put a bit of a shadow in the cup on this edge. Doesn't need as much of a highlight. And 
And then this edge over here, I'm going to put more white into that shadow color. Keep it fluid. Fill the texture of this canvas panel. Now, you don't have to fill the texture if that isn't if that's not the aesthetic that you want, you know? Cool thing with this is that you can make it as you can make it as detailed or as loose as you want. And you can have as much fun as you want. <laughs> so I'm going to go like this. I want to bring this edge around a little bit more. go. A little bit more of a bright highlight out here on this very, very edge. Up here on the handle. And I want to put some shadows in with the red and burnt sienna. So that's the, uh, that's the cadmium red hue and some burnt sienna. and maybe a touch of that yellow that's over there. I'm just sort of digging around for the, for the colors. There we go. I'm gonna put some shadows under the leaves. don't have to. I just want to. I think that just makes it feel a little bit more integrated. A little bit more like they're really there. And if you feel, uh, if you're uncomfortable doing this, don't do it. But sometimes we learn more when we push into our discomfort just a little bit. You know, you don't have to, to go out and jump off of, you know, a canyon wall on a zip line you can just put a little bit of paint down in an area, you know, just build that, build on your discomforts just a little bit. So I'm going to put that and I'm going to actually color in a little bit more, give this leaf a little more shape. See? So there's that cup is there, the leaf is there. I think I'm going to just sort of lightly let's add a little bit more of the deep yellow to my palette. There we go. Just lightly add some different colors in here. Maybe there's more leaves underneath. Having the, that orange color underneath though, gives us that 
those tones. This is very autumnal. I love stuff like this. Keep it loose. Keep it loose. Explore. Make it up. You know? After you've looked at enough leaves, you can kind of make up a leaf. It might end up having more, more bits going in and out than what a regular leaf would have okay. Just want to tuck a little bit more shadow down in there. All I did was pick up some Prussian blue and uh, burnt sienna. Very cozy painting. Look at that. Lovely, cozy painting. So, yeah, you can tell that I'm really enjoying a process when I start getting quiet and I start just focusing on the mindfulness of being here and doing this. I love how this paint is very opaque. You can go right over with lighter colors, with darker colors. You can go back and forth. Smoosh that. Smoosh it around. Enjoy your process. Whatever your process is. Oh, I did it. I did it. Oh, well. Sometimes you drop your brush and you hit the canvas. You know, things happen and it's okay. I'm not worried about it. I'm just having fun. Maybe I'll drop just a little bit of yellow down in here, like little leaves. Oh, I like that. Let's just get a little bit of texture down below. Build the painting up, knock it back. Build it up, knock it back. I mean, that's really all, all we're doing. I am looking at this going, I do want a little bit bright. some texture. I'm trying to not be too specific. Maybe even take a little bit of yellow and red. I'm just having fun. Get your painting to the point where you're having fun and don't don't worry about where I am. Just do yours. So I got my, I have some red and brown and yellow and, you know, all the colors on my brush. I'm going to color over some of that. I want to get a little more yellow. Push and pull. Enjoy the process.
make your painting yours. So I want more yellow, boom, boom. See, and there'll be, there'll be points where it's like, hey, you should have stopped at this point. And I'm like, yep, probably should have. Because now I'm putting more color in. But you know what? I'm not precious about my painting. And I will... Just keep working it until I'm happy. I did a painting a long, long time ago uh, that I, I probably took two or three weeks on it. And oh my gosh, it went through so many versions. If I can find it, I'll pop it up here. It turned out absolutely lovely. But there were times when it got so covered and I went so far off track that I had to start whole sections over again. And you know what? It became such a better painting because I did that. So just because you go off script, you, you know, I'm, I want my leaf brighter. I don't want it to be quite so brown. So I'm going to put more yellow in here. Just, just do what you, you know, what, what feels good to you. Hope you don't mind. This one ended up being a little bit longer, but you know what? I'm having fun and I've been hearing from the community that you guys wanted a, wanted some a little bit longer paintings. And basically, this is sort of paint along with me, right? It's, ooh, let's get a little bit of that red on there. I like that. I'm not putting any white. I'm using yellow for my, to, to lighten things, brighten things up. Use that yellow. I want a little bit brighter here. Mush that paint in. Maybe start getting some thicker, ooh, a little bit thicker paint here and there. Maybe I'll even Put some of the red into that, leaving the yellow out there at the edges and bring a little bit of yellow back on. I like that. We're just getting that that fun, fun tone. I like how there's bits of that orange still showing up underneath and around. Grab. See, I'm really going through the yellow this time. I might even. Got a little bit of a green up here. Kind of closer to the, hmm. Kind of closer in on the, on the leaf, closer to the stem. 
or vein center. Not so much of the red on that one, maybe. That was a dark um, or a mid green, permanent mid green, or permanent green mid, middle. Do you like seeing all the versions of the leaves? Of the leaves? Do you like having sort of like autumn happening right in front of you? Part of this is that I'm just exploring it and going, you know, maybe it was getting a little bit too monochromatic. I wanted a little bit more variation, so adding that green in, as long as I put it around in a couple spots, it should be fine. I don't want it to be just in one area, but I also don't want it to end up becoming a green painting. This is definitely a fall. Yeah. Now I'm getting messy brush strokes, loose brush, brush strokes, loosening them up a little bit, letting the color sort of dictate where it's going to go and not not being too worried about perfection. A little bit of that, not much have it going more to the more to the yellow. I like the layers. I like the the liveliness that's starting to happen here. Whoops, sorry about that. The the liveliness that's happening here. That it's not as predictable. be lively. Let's be unpredictable. Let's share our creativity out in the world. So this is part of my nature art challenge. I figure getting these leaves in here makes this nature, right? <laughs> the only the only thing with the nature art challenge is that I want you to keep it small. Keep it fun. Try and keep it, you know, under an hour. The, there is no time limit though. You can you you can do this for as long as you want, as late as you want. <laughs> and this is a challenge that's an ongoing challenge. It's not a monthly. So please, you know, if you feel like, hey, I can do some small art challenge artwork for a few days in a row and then you don't do it again for you know several months and then you do it again awesome okay so that was a bit more green than I wanted just throw a little bit more yellow in on it And maybe brighten that one up just a little bit. That cadmium red with the green just gives me a, a neutrally or neutralizes each other out a little bit. Gives me a shadowy color kind of a murky brown. I want to darken that up a little bit. I want that darker, but I don't want it to be there. 
that's a nice brown. Just wanted to darken that up just a little bit. Bring that over just a little. It's a little too bright right there. See? Add the colors. Take the colors away. I think that this is done. I like it a lot. <laughs> I hope that you had fun. Maybe I'll put a little... No, I don't want to put a space there. But maybe I'll put a little bit of white in the handle. I don't want to put brown. Maybe I'll put just a touch of white down inside there. So it's like the light coming through. Straighten that up just a bit. And it got a little bit big too. There we go. All right. I like this. I like that kind of mosaic, fractally looking leaves. The cup of coffee. Go have a cozy hot cup of something when the weather gets chilly outside and remember to go out and do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. Bye-bye.